Yeah, so you get your ball of wool, or wadding, and you keep some back for your feet. Yeah? Yep. Is that still in shot? Come on then, tell me about your line. <sighs> and you've got to stuff your sock, and you've got to get it right to the end. So this is step one? This is step one. Right. So the, the kids will have chosen the sock, or they'll have brought a sock in from home. Yep. Um, then they've got two socks. Two socks, preferably different socks. Yeah. Because yeah. they've got to think of the toe bit as being part of the face. Yeah. And then that section is going to be part of the body. Okay. So but this the is rest good. of it, they could swap round with somebody else if they wanted to. So this one's going to have a white face. White face, and then a pink body. And a pink body, pink and blue stripes. Yeah. Okay. Well, not that bit. It's going to be that bit. Right. But if it's doesn't look as if it's round, which I've purposely done that so it isn't round. Yeah. Then they basically need to take it all back out. Okay. And start the process again. Right, so you're taking it out now. Okay. Yeah, and they've got to get it so if. Is it best to do a bit at a time? No, you've got to do it all in at once because if you do it a bit at a time, it goes lump and you've got to try and think round. Right, okay. Try it again. This is where you might need someone to help you. Right. That's looking better already. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. It gets to end. Sorry. It's okay. And then push it as far. Now, if you wanted your pig to be bigger, mm -hmm. you just add more wadding. Right. If you wanted it to be a baby sock, then obviously you won't put as much in. Okay. Yeah. So that should be right to the very end. So all of that's nice and tight. Okay. Okay. Your next bit then. So that's step one. So we're going to step one. I'm going to pause it there. So I have to get another battery. So next stage, push all your wadding up to the top, and then cut as straight as you can. Okay. Then you need to thread your needle. And your cotton should be the same colour as your base. And it needs to be finger and thumb to your elbow. Right. We're just using white because we can see it yeah. for the video. Right. Cut it at a 45 degree angle. And you've got a little point on there. Right. Don't you wet the cotton then? I have all the. Shouldn't need to. Okay. That's gone straight. Has it gone straight on? It's gone yeah. straight on. Look. If you do it so it's double. Yeah. But you don't need to tie a knot at the end. Because what you're going to do now, and I don't know whether you want to get a bit closer, you need to do a, a stitch, another stitch, and there where you've got your loop, you're going to put your needle through your loop. Right, and that ties and that it creates off. your knot. Mm -hmm. You do that twice. And also, you won't see that because it's in red. What would be in red? Then you do a running stitch, so up and down. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's basically going to go all the way around and you're going to think you ain't got enough cotton. But you have, because you're going to start pulling it. So you can see I ain't cut that straight, So, but it doesn't matter as long as... You know, in the mid middle of a video here. You? Yes, you've ruined that shot now. Sorry. See, we can't use it now, can we? We can. Carry on. <coughs> we'll, right, so we'll when you get to the end... These, these things happen. When you get to the end, you basically start pulling it. And okay. you need to push all that thread. Mm. So it goes down, so you get a nice bottom. Right. Alright? Mm -hmm. If any of them are sticking out, you need to just tuck them in with your fingers. Yeah. Okay? And does that need tying off? That needs tightening, and right. you need to stitch, so you go from... Where have you finished? To the opposite side, and you're basically stitching it so it doesn't come out. Right. So if you pulled on that, it wouldn't come undone. Yeah. Now you're not actually going to see this again because this is your inside bottom bit. Okay. Then 
And now you started. Oh, I don't know. stitch. You loop through your stitch. Rachel yeah. just gone away to see you. Not you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave it open. It's alright. We're going to edit over it. What are you doing? And then just cut it. <laughs> and then cut it again. Excellent. Unless you're inside bottom. Right. Stage two done. Are you doing Right, so the next stage is your other sock, your outer sock, is going to sit over the top covering that coloured thread, coloured sock. So you should just see his little face. Okay, you can right. readjust it whenever you need to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then same again, you cut off that extra bit. No, but you say PV is. It's this bit where you need to fold it down so you're folding it sort of like in on itself. Yeah. And if you just get some pins to pin it in place, that just gives you a nice edge without seeing any of the raw edges. You might need to teach yourself with this bit. Okay, then bits will get sewn down so you'll not see them afterwards. Okay. Then you get your thread, but this time you've got two ends at the top. So you've doubled so your thread. Finger to elbow, finger yeah. to elbow. Right. And then them two ends thread through. Okay, so it's one length is a bit longer than the other. So, start as you did before. Why have you done that? Why have you done what? Why have you doubled the cotton? Because I want it to be thicker because it's got to try and withstand a lot more tension. Ah, right, okay. So, coming from a bit further down, up to here. But instead of doing your knot and doubling it, because we don't want to see any of the stitching, and there's a little guide, we're going to... Hang on, yep. So you're just zigzagging back and forth. Yeah. You could do it other ways, but it's the easiest way that kids can do it. So it's a bit, no, it's not, I want to say it's a bit like a back stitch, but it's nice, it's just like a, a crisscross, like. Yeah. Um, there's worksheets that I've done that will actually show you how to do this. Yeah. Stage by stage, if you're not sure. Right. They don't tell you to use pins, but I just think it's easier for kids. Yeah. Do you get kids that generally run out of cotton and then they've got to? Do some more. Yeah, I mean, all they'll have to do is start it how I start it with a needle through your loop. Yeah. But what I do at this point is when I get to the end, I sort of try to get as far as I can with my needle to pull that end in. Right, I've got you. And then you can do the same when you get to that end. So it's a bit smoother at the back. Can you see it sort of pulls? <laughs> if I pull it back out, you can pull it in. Right, yeah. And you can pull it in as tight as you want. Right. Or you can leave it quite loose. It depends on what you want it to look like at the back. Okay. And then do the same again for that side where you started. Yeah. And it just took some little bits that were sticking out. In. Right. Then, if you come a bit further out without knotting it, you can just make your stitch your cotton disappear if you pull pull your thread mm -hmm. so it's on tension pull it and then it disappears right and you've got no visible stitching excellent okay so that's it for that step that's it for that step super so next bit the uh, 
Okay. Now you can notice any part from there to there or there to there that you've got left of your sock you can use. Right, so you okay. wouldn't use a curved bit then, the eel and the toe, no. you'd, you'd want flat bits. You okay. need flat bits. Right. So it depends on what area you want. Right, what do you want? So if I just want pink or if I want striped, I'm going to go for striped. Okay. Because it's just a bit different. So they can be bigger or they can be smaller, it depends on how big you want your ears. Yeah. But that's roughly the size. Then you need to fold that in half. <laughs> So you've got your two ears yeah. and then cut along the centre. Yeah. Okay. So you've now got two, two pig's folded. ears, but you've got to then get the shape. So you need to turn it inside out. So you've got the wrong side looking. And you can either draw along there, so you've got like a half moon shape. Mm -hmm. They can just do it freehand. Would you give the kids Taylor's chalk for this or? Yeah. Right. So you've got that shape. Yes. <laughs> okay. Still inside out. Double the thread like last time. Yeah. Okay, and you're going to back stitch. So I'm going to be stitching from there all the way around to there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start as I started before. And I've got my needle, but this time I've actually got a loop already. So I can just go straight through there to create my knot. Do that twice. Okay, and then you back stitch in. Do you stuff the ears or? No, the ears don't get stuffed at all, it's only your little feet that do. Okay. So you're coming back on yourself all the time. This will take a bit of time as well. Yeah. Yeah, so once you've got to the top, needle through your loop again. And then we're going to turn it the right way around. Still keeping it threaded. Okay. Okay, so you've kind of got your pig's little E shape there. But now, we're going to do a running stitch like we did at the very start where we gathered the pig's bum. Or bottom, whatever you want to call it. And then you gather that up. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can make him his ear big or you can gather it down so it scrunches up. Right. So it'll sit onto his little thing there. Okay, then you need to do exactly the same way you're running backwards and forwards. Just says if the needle's threaded. Oh no, yeah, I've got one there. I'd stop it now. <laughs> so we're stitching all the way through from one side to the other about four or five times. Just so it holds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one little pig's ear, and then repeat it with the other one. Yep. All right. Once you've done that, you then need to mark it out where you're wanting it on the actual pig. If you try to think where the, there's a, a line usually where they've joined it, if you can keep that parallel and sort of think about where you want your ears, whether you want them really close together, whether you want them further apart, and then just mark it off with your pen. Or Taylor's chalk. Mm -hmm. Just so you can see it. And put the stitch in it to hold it. If you keep it flat to start with, you're going to do a blanket stitch. And you're going to try and hide all these stitches underneath best you can. Okay. That's going to take a while to do. So you could stop that and then I can. So we've got both ears on now. Yeah, I'm just going to. But we're just going to finish off. Just going to gather it a little bit because this bit is sticking out too much. Yeah. So if you find that one is bigger than the other, you can just pull it, doing a little stitch. 
and then taking it back down through the inside of the ear. Yeah. And we're trying to get as neat as possible. Yep. And try and hide the stitch as we did previously when we did the... Um, yeah, it's just the raw edges yeah. of the actual pig. So that's a bit more his same size now. Okay. So once you've done the front bit, you need to turn it over and you need to neaten the back as well. But if you take a little bit more of the bottom sock, the body sock, yeah. and almost as if you're pulling it over. So rather than going right to the very bottom there, you're coming a bit further up. That's how you can disguise it. And as you're pulling it down, it should stitch over it, so you won't be able to see them raw edges. So you've got a raw edge there, you're going a bit higher up than that raw edge, and stitching it down, and it'll just hide it, it makes it a bit neater, and obviously using the same colour thread right. makes it a lot easier as well. Yep. Once Super. you've sewn it all, and you do your stitch away, and then you can cut that bit off again after tension. Right. Okay. Superb. I'm just going to stitch that bit because I'm not going to pull that from bit. So, next step is to make your feet. So, the spare bit of wadding that you had, you need to break up into four. Okay. Make them into little cotton wool balls. Okay, you need to make four of them. Right, these, before you do any stitching, you need to be able to insert them into the inside and get your shape right. Okay. Oh, you see, pearl four in at the same right. Pearl four in. Yeah. And then you know if they're too big or if they need moving across. If they are too big, then obviously you just take them all back out. So we should be able to stand. So you can see he's wonky there. Yeah, so you need to move his feet across. And it doesn't matter if they're joining together because they won't be once you start stitching. See that that one's too small. Quite a bit more. Strip it back in. So from the side, you can kind of see already what they're going to look like. They should just stand up. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> Yep. yep. Right, so I've done three. We've got the last one to do. So as you've done all the others, you do your loop, your needle through your loop. Remember this is double thickness. Do that twice just to reinforce it. Okay. And then you're gonna back stitch all the way around this one, but what you need to make sure is that you're catching and you're stitching down to this bottom sock. So you're sewing through both you're socks? You're sewing through both socks, right. otherwise you'll not get that shape and it'll move around. Okay. So it'll take a bit of time and it is a bit tough to get started, but you just got to try and think round. Are you doing a back stitch there? Yeah. Okay. It's the easiest one to do. So you're stitching down and round, thinking that you're always going round the cotton wool ball, mm -hmm. making sure that you're going right down into the other sock. So it feels as if it's a bit tough, but it's right. If you if, so, if you do both socks, that's sealing that um, cotton yeah, wool ball, it's isn't it? Between them, so, so it doesn't move around. Yeah. Because if you don't, you won't get that nice shape. Right, and you're trying to get it as circular as yeah as possible. I'm trying to get it so you make it into like a little ball. Okay. It's full. Do your needle through your loop again, just to finish it off, and then come through, pull it tight again, and just cut that off for 
feet. It should stand up quite nicely. Yep. <laughs> right, so marking out your buttons, you need to decide where you want them to be, whether you want it to be close together, further apart, I think I'll go for it close together. So try to get it sort of equal distance from your ears, so use your ears as a guide. So I can just see that. Mm -hmm. Then, with your double thickness thread, start on there, put your needle through your loop, pull it, it just makes it easier, but when you start, do that twice, just to reinforce it again. And then you need to decide on which way around you want your buttons, whether you want them the correct way, if you've sewn it onto a cardigan or something, or the other way, I think that looks quite nice. And you have to go through one hole, down to another one, and then you're going to go through your sock, and you're going to repeat that about four times. Are you crisscrossing the holes? No, I'm going to do two on one side, and then the other two on the other side, because right. it's supposed to look quite neat yeah. if you were sewing it onto a cardio. Like that. So I've done it three times. Still going through my sock as well. Yeah. So I sort of start on my sock, come through. Now I'm going to go down to the other eye the hole. So I'm going to go at the back of it and come back up through. Put that down. And do that again about four times. Right. And the last bit I'm going to do, I'm going to create a shank for the back of it. So it just gives it even more support. Yeah, so that's the same. Mm -hmm. And to do a shank, all you're doing is wrapping it around a couple of times. Right. That just reinforces, well, it just supports the work that you've done, and then you can go to your next one. Cross on the other side. Right, And then yes. repeat it. Yeah? Yep. Let's go back down and through. Start, finish how you started, so you need a three loop, pull it, just do that twice. And then if you come underneath, and again, tighten your thread, cut it off, you end up with two little nostrils. Okay, and then we've just Okay. Okay, so now we're going to mark out where we're going to have his eyes. Again, position them whether you want them far apart or whether you want to mock in. So if they're almost buzz eyed. So I'm going to take one off and mark where I want it. Move that across. And mark where I'm going to have that. That's when you get your glue gun. Now you might need to teach to do this. Stick one up. And just hold it down for a bit. And that will 
that, that will hold they, it. They'll stay on. Oh, yep. fantastic. Yep. So that's your basic sock pick. And then obviously they accessorise it. Yeah. So once you've got your basic sock pick, you then can decide on the size of the sock pick. So you can have bigger sock picks by adding more wadding, a smaller sock pick by using the baby uh, baby socks, and obviously less wadding. Or then you can add gathered ribbon and just stitching it around its belly. Or you can add capes, forget about the nostrils and add teeth. Or you can go completely mad and have hair on it, beads on it, and you can accessorise him so he's now an Elvis pig rather than just a standard pig. And you've got your little pig family.